Hi everybody, thanks for watching another video. I'm in our uh, milking barn behind our uh, milking parlor here. The parlor's down at the far end there, the holding area. They're uh, milking the last pen here before lunchtime or before we milk our uh, special needs cows. I've had a few videos uh, where you guys have commented about how we handle our uh, treated cows and, and our fresh cows in the parlor. And I thought I'd start back here and then show you guys uh, how we uh, handle them in the parlor. So this uh, straw pen here, these are uh, treated cows. So these are cows that have been uh, treated with antibiotics. Their milk is uh, not able to be shipped. So they have a, uh, well you can see it on this girl here. She's got a, a red band on her leg. That means it's that she has been treated with antibiotics. Her milk cannot go in the tank. Then everybody on our farm knows that this cow should not be milked into the tank. And then, this uh, other straw pen next to it here, these are, uh, would be fresh cows come into this pen here for the first day or so after calving. And then they get moved over into this pen, which is a two row freestyle pen. And our fresh cows are in here for about a week, week to 10 days. And then they get moved over to this side and they'll be in this pen for about 30 days. And then they'll go out to one of the high production pens. And from this point, we split first and second lactation together in uh, pens and then third and up are together in pens until they get into our late lactation pens and they go back together again. But I thought I'd show you guys, uh, uh, talk about some of these cows, what they have going on. Uh, some of you guys have been curious about uh, some of the issues we deal with. This cow right here is a heifer actually. Uh, she's uh, She's got pneumonia. She's treated with antibiotics with Polyflex. She, uh, I think she's been treated a couple times for pneumonia. So pneumonia is a pretty uh, significant, well, significant for anybody, but for cows uh, in particular, pneumonia is a pretty significant uh, issue because cows don't have a lot of extra lung capacity. We don't like to see uh, cows with pneumonia or calves or heifers with pneumonia because we know there's a highly likelihood that they'll uh, have pneumonia again later at some point in their life. I think that cow there, she's got uh, some kind of, she's got a rumen issue going on, so her rumen's not working quite like it should. She's not treated, she just uh, got some anab or some uh, probiotics, and uh, they'll move her into this pen just to keep her close to feed, that she can easily walk back and forth to feed and lay down, and uh, she doesn't have uh, competition with the other cows, and I think this cow's got the same thing going on. She, uh, yeah, she's also got a, a rumen issue going on. She's just uh, given uh, probiotics. And then this, this other cow here, 78, 83. She's got, uh, they've, they've got it written down as an uh, injury and they treated her with Polyflex, but I'm not, I didn't ask him, I'm not quite sure. I don't really see anything on her that's wrong with her, but they must have felt that she, they needed to treat her with uh, antibiotics. So that's why she's in here. And then in our fresh pen, we call it our fresh pen, but sometimes I'll move cows in here that uh, just need a little bit uh, extra attention. You know, maybe a lame cow that's, that'll be in this pen until they can go to the hoof trimmer. We'll take a look at some of these cows. This heifer here, she's uh, 10 days of milk. She's leaking her milk. To, these cows are about to go to the parlor here shortly. They've got her as uh, having ketosis, so she's uh, has to do with her, the ener energy imbalance it, uh, in her body. And this heifer just calved this morning. You can see she's still got her placenta hanging there. And then there was uh, let's see what the rest of these cow. This uh, this heifer also calved yesterday, so she will likely either be moved into that into this next pen here later today or tomorrow. And this cow, she's, they've got her written down as lame, so they moved her into this pen. She'll go to the hoof trimmer tomorrow probably just to check her out. And then this last one here, she's also got uh, ketosis. And then both those ketosis cows just been uh, treated with probiotics and uh, vitamin B and dextrose, which is sugar. So th this is where all of our special needs cows are. They're in these two straw pens here, just to keep them close to feed, give them a little bit more, uh, keep it a little bit more comfortable for them here. 
uh, less competition. And these cows are always milked last before we clean the parlor and clean the milking machines, in particular the cows with the antibiotics. We want to make sure that milk uh, has no chance of getting into our milk tank. So they're uh, milked last and then um, all the equipment's washed and then at uh, night again tonight at around 11 o'clock these cows will be milked again. So when, when our, these cows do, and I'll talk about that more up there, when these cows do go to the parlor, these, the fresh cows here, they'll milk their colostrum separate in buckets, test the colostrum. If it's uh, good quality, we'll keep it. If it's poor quality, we'll discard it. And uh, yeah, I guess the same goes for all, the rest of these cows in this pen will be milked, but that milk will be used to uh, feed our, our calves, I guess, essentially, for the most part. So the, the hospital pen, their milk last. That milk doesn't, just ends up in the drain. So these cows that uh, are treated with antibiotics, there's a withdrawal period for how long their milk has to be uh, kept out of the tank. So we'll wait that period and then we'll test these cows milk individually just to make sure that there's no antibiotics in their milk. Sometimes if a cow is really sick, they don't, this antibiotics is not out of their system as quickly as the, uh, uh, normal withdrawal time is so it's always good to uh, double check those cows uh, make sure that there's no antibiotics in their milk before they are milked into the tank again because if there's any an antibiotics in our milk tank there are the load is discarded at the plant and we're not paid for that milk so we definitely don't want that happening make sure that we keep good records and that the cows that are treated with antibiotics are kept separate that's why we have them in a separate pen back here so uh, these cows will go to the parlor in a few minutes here and then I'll uh, show you guys up there in particular those two two heifers that calved some of you guys had asked how do you uh, train your heifers into the parlor and I'll uh, show you that show you that when we're up there usually it goes uh, not too bad so hopefully that's today but what we try to do is uh, have them follow a cow in so we don't want them being the first in line and we also don't want them being the last in line so they can kind of follow a, another cow's lead into the parlor and that Usually works pretty good. Sometimes you have to kind of push them in to get them to turn sideways at least the first time. And then after that, they uh, typically figure it out. Fresh cows and hospital cows are coming in the parlor now. So the second last line here of uh, pen five, the last pen we milk before lunchtime. See if I can find a spot where those heifers are not gonna be looking at me instead of uh, where they're supposed to be looking. Come on, girl. That's one of the heifers there. Eduardo's gonna help get her into space. She went in pretty easy. And that was the second one there. that just come into the parlor now for the first time. Doesn't always go that easy. She went right in after Eduardo went uh, in behind her there and then Cal came up behind her so then she kind of gets uh, pushed into space where she's supposed to stand, I guess. Doesn't always go that easy. And now he, he's uh, checking at the numbers here because that one but there's one heifer and one cow they need to collect colostrum from, I think. He's gonna look at the numbers up here and then they know, they can go down there and then they know which one they need to collect colostrum from, make sure they get the right cow. So the, the 
first one here is that cow that they need to collect colostrum from and then down there that's uh, one heifer that they need to collect colostrum from so we use these buckets just pull the pull the milk tube off connect it to the bucket and then connect the tube from the buckets to the hose so then we can still use the vacuum coming from the basement but the milk from the cow goes into the bucket instead of down to the basement to the milk lines No cows with mastitis here uh, today. We haven't had any with mastitis here for the last uh, week or so, which is kind of un unusual. It's a good thing, but usually we'll have a one or two cows with, with mastitis, but not now. I like to keep it that way. But this line right here, this is the, the last line from pen five. So before connecting any of these other cows, they wait till this line of cows is done and they'll pump this milk up to the tank, disconnect from the tank, and then we'll start milking the rest of these cows here so we don't end up with any of this milk into the milk tank. Not much more I can show you here. If there was a cow with mastitis, I could show you how they, um, they'll strip the cow by hand and then attach a machine and uh, cows with mastitis will typically milk out completely, make sure that we get all the milk out. And then depending on what she's, if she's treated and what she's treated with, they'll, uh, put the antibiotics into the quarter that uh, has mastitis only and uh, then they'll get dipped and go back to the hospital pen, fresh pen. But I could show you uh, with this colostrum they're collecting how we uh, determine what's good quality colostrum and what's not. And we do that with, uh, we're basically looking at how dense it is and the denser it is in theory the better, the higher the quality. So that's how we're we're doing it. We're not using a refractometer or what, whatever they're called. It's uh, probably more accurate, but more of a more of a chance for error, I guess. In my opinion, they need need to be calibrated all the time. We use a colostrometer, which basically you put it in the milk, and the further down in the milk it sinks, the poorer quality of colostrum is. It's a little bit loud in here, so I apologize. They're uh, cleaning the walls with the pressure washer. That's what you hear in the background. This is that colostrum meter that we use. So essentially, it's just uh, depending on how dense the milk is, the higher up it sits in the milk. And if it's in the green, we consider that good. If it's in the red, we discard it. And there's a kind of hard to see, but in between the green and the red, it's kind of a, a darker color green or a different color green, I guess. If it's in the middle there, we'll save that colostrum and use it as the second colostrum. So we do feed our, our calves uh, 4 liters of colostrum, and then 12 hours later we'll get another 2 liters, but typically we'll save the higher quality colostrum for the first feeding. And I dump a little bit of the colostrum in that pail there, and it'll That was borderline, but it wasn't the, the better color green or the lighter color green, so they'll save that gloss from there. And you can see we use this to fill the bags, uh, filling uh, yeah, about four liters, so that liter that he's, the thing that he's holding in his hand holds uh, a little bit over four liters. To fill the bag, you can see it's uh, just about full to the top, and then we'll put that in the freezer. They'll mark the date on there. So they'll put the date on the cap and use the uh, older colostrum first. So that we have probably, uh, I don't know, 20 to 30 of those cartridges and bags in freezers in our calf barn. 
When a calf is born, they'll stick it in the unthawing uh, machine. It takes about 20 minutes to unthaw. And then they'll uh, feed it to the calf. And then 12 hours later, they'll feed the calf again, but just two liters that second time. And then, depending on how much colostrum we have and the quality that we have, we'll use the first colostrum, that second feeding if we have enough. Otherwise, they'll uh, use colostrum from a second milking for the second feeding. I was working on the second bag here. That was the same, got it right on the edge there, uh, quality wise. Uh, depend, depending on, uh, yeah, like I said, depending on how much colostrum we have uh, in storage, we'll save as much as uh, we can or we try to keep those freezers as full as possible because there are times of the year where we won't have enough high quality colostrum to feed all of our calves. And uh, in particular, uh, heifers don't uh, have as much colostrum to begin with and a lot of times their quality isn't as high. So we won't always save the colostrum from our heifers. Back behind the parlor again here. Cows are back in the pen. I don't know how well you guys could really hear me up there with all the background noise, but what I was saying uh, there, when uh, when cow cows have their calf, we'll uh, milk their first milking, which is colostrum. We'll test the colostrum. If it's good quality, we'll uh, keep it in those bags, in those green cartridges, and we'll freeze it. And if it's... Uh, uh, kind of in that middle green section on the colostrum meter they'll either discard it or if they need colostrum for the second feeding when the calves get two liters a second time they'll use that colostrum if they don't have enough of the the highest quality colostrum for that second feeding so the calves get four liters of colostrum after birth and then another two liters about 12 hours later and then they'll go to getting whole milk whole pasteurized milk uh, not sure if there's, uh, if there's anything else I missed or didn't talk about. If you guys have any uh, questions or comments, uh, post them down below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys watching and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.